This is the Sound Minds Podcast. You don't want to miss these gems. And we are live Sound, Sound Minds. Minds. Well, let me tell you guys this. When I met Jamal, he invited me to his dojo. This might have been in 73. Mm-hmm. I went to his dojo in Brooklyn, and a guy walks in, and we're training, and he says, he wants to see you fight. And I said, he who? He said, the gentleman at the door. He's my friend. You might have heard me. I said, uh, what's his name? He said, Huey Newton. Sound and, and he said, yeah, yeah. And Yo, he where's said, the popcorn, man? I said, like, popcorn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Huey so so Huey Newton. So Huey Newton requested you to fight. He, he requested me to spar with Jamal Joseph. I'm going to tell you a story about that, too, when we talk about the bank robbery, what ended me and Jamal's friendship. Um, and it was because of the bank robbery, because I don't know if you guys know, it's, it's no secret. He wound up being one of the Black Liberation Army members. And right. when I when I stopped the bank robbery, he actually didn't like it. And See, th- this was mm-hmm. a point in time, just for listeners, where there was a lot of splintering happening, right? So there was like the Weathermen, there was the BLA, there was the Black Panthers. And I think these days, a lot of people look back in that and they just think, oh, it was Black people against the KKK, but it wasn't really like that. So would you kind of just for people who don't get it, like there were a lot of people who were trying to deal with this horrible state of white supremacy, but there were different ways. And the more time went on and the more politics got involved, the more some serious fallouts and it's unfortunate, but we have to go back and really look at this. There was pain being put in by some of us against our own just because of these fallouts. There was definitely different groups, like whole different organizations. Not every Panther a SNCC member or SCLC, you know, was thinking the same and doing the same. And we send love and respect to all of them because they were not dysfunctional people. They were activists trying to do something in a dysfunctional state of living. You know, and, break, and, and and where you're going with it, I think you really should just really go right into the bank robbery situation because we're at that point where, you know, this is where you say you also mentioned how you had to pull back anyways. You had to fall back. You had to go, yeah. you know, quiet yeah. for a minute, you know, yeah. and I think it ties into that what was going on, you know, right. but first we got to know. How the heck you out there stopping bank robbers though? Like we need to know that story. Like barehanded with you know, yeah, the story is incredible. So you know, break that down. Like, yeah, um, I was doing a bank drop off for my job. I was a, a manager at a liquor store, assistant manager at a liquor store, and every day we would drop off the money in the bank from the night be- before. And that day was my turn to drop off the money. So when I would do it, when I when I would do it, I met this young lady at the, the bank. Her name was Carmen Feliciano. That was her real name because that's my kid's cousin's name. So it's not your cousins. If my children are watching, her name was Carmen Feliciano. And um, she was a very nice, very petite young lady. Very sweet. And so every day I would say hi and we would flirt with each other. So this one particular day I came into the bank and um, when I got online, she asked me to get off of line and um, because she wanted me to stand aside so we can talk, you know, afterward when it got slow, because the busy time was usually when it opened up at nine o'clock and then it would slow down like nine thirty. And um, while I'm there, I see a guy in the, in the bank with a hoodie on. And I said to myself, wow, this guy's in a bank with a hood with a hood on. You know, he's it don't look right. But I didn't think nothing of it. Um, make a short story shorter, he walks over to her and um he hands her a bag. He slams a bag on the counter. And at the time, if you remember, the banks didn't have the glass partitions and stuff. This was in 81. And um uh it had the glass partition, but not the ones where it covered up the whole thing. It was a big hole. And then you could put the money there. And um, he handed the bag. And on the other side of the bag, which I couldn't see, was a note telling her to hand him some money. And um, I seen her looking at the bag. And I said, why is she looking at the bag, staring at the bag? I didn't know she was reading the note. He said, listen, you called it a B word and said, just put the money in. 
he had to raise his voice because she was nervous. She was in shock. And he, she just, she didn't count any money. That's when I knew what was going on. She didn't count the money. And she grabbed a handful and just started stuffing it in the bag. Um, and he kept cursing at her because she wasn't moving fast enough. And I turned around. I looked behind me and the door was next to me. So I said, well, he's not going to go out this way. And um, sure enough, he tried to come out where I was standing. And uh wasn't a good move. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't a good move. What's the move? What's the move you did? <laughs> yeah, hold up. I, I don't want exactly. It was it wasn't it wasn't it was bad for him. It was bad. <laughs> and uh I laid him out and um I wasn't used to what happened. The cops ran in, thought I was because I was on top of him, they thought I was the bank robber, they hit me in the head with the gun. Mm. Um Said they was going to blow my brains out. And the people were screaming, no, no, it's not him, the guy on the floor. And then I shoved the cop because I was so angry because he could have killed me. And um, then it just so happened. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor Cox happened to be doing a radio broadcast upstairs in the same building, ironically. And uh, he came down, he heard about it because all the, the helicopters outside and the people running in the street and screaming that the bank was being robbed. And um, then he came down, he congratulated me. That's the picture I think I sent you guys. And he congratulated me. And it was like, you know, back then it was no YouTube, there was no Facebook. So everything was word of mouth. But I've never seen so many people come outside at one time. And when I walked outside the bank, it was like a ticker tape parade, it was ridiculous. And it was all over. The, the world news and this and and everybody wanted to interview me and I got a call a couple of days later from my mom saying that um is everybody still there yes 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 we're still oh, okay right. oh, yeah. um saying uh that please come home that they're getting phone calls that they want to kill my family kill me and um so I had to make the decision to to go underground, and and um, I didn't want to no interviews no more no newspapers no I got offered all kind of deals I didn't want to do it I wanted my family came first so I gave it all up so I didn't do any interviews for for years for maybe twenty years the next twenty years I refused any magazines any newspaper any any anything so, you know just to make sure my family was protected. But you still were teaching. I was still, I was still teaching. I was still okay. teaching. Yeah. So I, you went from samurai to ninja. <laughs> <laughs> and That's what happened with story. Jamal Joseph, um, I was at a tournament as a special guest one day, and I went reluctantly, um, and he was there. And when I went to shake his hand, he refused to shake my hand. And that's when I was told what was happening. You know, that... Wow. Uh, you know, they wasn't happy with what I did. Now, Thank even you. though even though it was a uh, bad form, you, the article says you hit him with a forearm, forearm, <laughs> forearm to the gut. No, <laughs> no, I hit him with a forearm to the upper chest, and then I swept his feet from under him. Nice. He hit the ground, and then I stomped. That was it. True, true master. Spoken like a true master. (laughs) This is the Sound Minds Podcast. You don't want to miss these gems. You don't want to miss these gems. You don't want to miss these gems. No, 